Today we are continuing our Electrical 101 series by continuing into a sub-series where we're going to wire up this I did it steering column, which is going to go into my 1973 turbocharged Dodge Charger. I mentioned that this column is a race series steering column, and as we move along through the series, you guys are going to understand why. A quick description of this steering column is that it's all aluminum, it's super lightweight, it has provisions for the turn signals and for the hazards, and currently I have installed an I did it quick release hub and that's just so I can remove the steering wheel on and off in between sessions at the track or on the dyno. This is a universal steering column so it comes with a universal pigtail which is commonly seen in GM type vehicles. This is a standard 14 pin flat plug but as you guys can see only about half the pins are being used. So before you install any kind of new component it's always good to identify what each wire does so that's the first thing we're going to do. Like I mentioned this is a 14 pin plug and it actually uses letters instead of numbers to actually draw everything out. So it'll start A, B, C, D, and then it'll end up at the letter P. For whatever reason, GM decided to skip the letter I and the letter O. So we're also going to have to skip those. Coming in from top to bottom, the first three pins are a little confusing. And I haven't really explored what these are about, but these are called the cornering lamp. And like I said, I'm not really sure what they're used for, so I'm going to go ahead and ignore those ones. D and E are a very similar situation, and these are actually both for the key buzzer. So when you put your key in to the steering column, normally you're gonna hear like a ding or a bing or some sort of noise coming from somewhere else in the vehicle, letting you know that the key is still in the ignition when you open the door. So D and E are going to be the key alarm. I just said that it's D and E, but it's actually E and F, and I have no idea what D is for. Either way, we're gonna ignore all of this unless your car actually has a key alarm. In this case, you're gonna to want to go ahead and save the E and the F pins and keep the wires intact so you can wire them up to a key alarm. Like I mentioned, this is a racing steering column, so it has no ignition switch in the steering column itself. The car is turned on through a switch panel and a button, so there's no key in the column at all. It helps keep everything lightweight and very slim. So in my case, I can ignore the key alarm completely. Moving on to the good stuff, that's going to be the letter G all the way to the letter P, and that's where the bulk of this video is going to come from. Starting from the letter G, that is going to be a wire that comes from the ground side of the horn relay and that's going to normally run through your steering column into a wire that comes in on top and then it grounds itself through the horn button and then that signal is going to be sent back to the horn relay which will then trigger the horn relay to turn on and by extension the horn itself will turn on after that again this is a racing steering column so we have no provision for a horn wire the black wire to the horn relay is here but there's no provision for that up here so i'm going to ignore that myself but for those of you wanting to hook up your horn that's what the letter g is for that's going to be the negative side of the horn relay and to further clarify this is a wire that goes into the steering column and i'll explain to you what in and then out is going to mean in a second continuing on to the letter h this is pretty standard this is your left front turn signal so we're going to go lf and then turn signal you guys can probably guess what the letter j is going to be and that's going to be the right front turn signal and both of these are going to be out wires which means power is going to be leaving the steering column the letter k is the power wire from the hazard relay or the flasher relay so we're going to call this the emergency relay or emergency light flasher in other words a hazard flasher that's going to be an in wire so power is going into the steering column from the hazard flasher the letter L is going to be the feed wire from the turn signal flasher. So in this setup, we're going to actually have two flashers and not just one. One's going to be dedicated for the emergency lights or the hazard lights, and the other one's going to be dedicated specifically for the turn signals themselves. So we're going to call this a turn signal flasher. And then this is also going to be a feed wire or a wire that feeds into here or just simply an in wire. The letter M is going to be the left rear turn signal. So we're going to put LR and then turn signal. And then you can guess what the letter N is, and that's going to be the right rear turn signal. Those are going to both be out wires. And pin P is going to be the feed wire coming in from the brake lights or in other words, the brake switch and that's going to be an in wire. Now that we know what each of these pins are, it's time to go ahead and map it out. So we're going to break this up into sections. We're gonna go ahead and just pick the top pin that's listed right here for the turn signal, and we're going to go ahead and wire up the turn signal for the left front, and that's going to be pin H. 
So we're gonna go ahead and find pin H, which is actually this light blue wire that's hanging out right here. And that's going to go to our turn signal, which is right here. Before we go ahead and wire things up, let's go ahead and draw this out so we have a general idea of what we're going to do. So like always, we're gonna go ahead and start at the batteries. Six two volt cells, that's gonna be a 12 volt battery. Continuing on, we're not gonna have a fuse, but just for good measure, we're gonna go ahead and add a fuse in the middle which you typically want to use. In the previous video, we talked about the flasher or the flasher relay. We're gonna be adding one of those in here. So let's go ahead and add a flasher relay here. From there, we're gonna draw out the connector and it's going to feed into pin L. So we're gonna go ahead and feed pin L right here. That's going to continue on to the steering column with power going in. Inside of the steering column, there's going to be a switch that is going to be our turn signal switch. In this case, it's going to be a switch that has three positions. The center position is going to be off, the top position is going to be right, and the bottom position is going to be left. And we're gonna go ahead and draw a couple dotted lines so we know that there is movement in this switch, and then we're going to go ahead and draw a circle to complete this right here. Since we know that the top one is the right, we're gonna go ahead and label it. So we're gonna put, run a wire out of that, and we're gonna put right, and then the bottom one is going to be left, so we're gonna go left. From there, we're gonna continue on to the left front turn signal. So we're gonna go ahead and draw pin H right here, and that's going to circle back this way. Once it goes through the connector, it goes straight to the light bulb, and that's going to feed right into your turn signal. After it leaves your turn signal, it'll go straight to ground. If you guys have been following along with the last four videos, this should look pretty familiar. If you guys are a little lost, I do recommend going back and watching some of those videos again. One thing that I do wanna note about this diagram is that you notice that I put the flasher before the switch. I've had a question of whether or not I can place the flasher from before the switch to after the switch. So it would basically look like the same thing. So we're gonna start at the fuse this time. We're gonna ignore the battery. We're gonna go straight. We're gonna ignore the connector and just go straight into the switch. So normally it's in the off position, so it's off. And then you have the left and the right. So we're gonna go ahead and then just draw our dotted line, signaling that we can go into either one, so right, left. And then from here, you have the option to install your flasher or not to install your flasher. And so you would install one here, and then you would install one there, and then you would continue on, go here and go there, and then you would go into your light bulb. Uh, some of you might be asking, what is the point of doing it like this versus doing it the other way? Well, if you wanted to completely isolate the left and the right circuit, this is the way that you would do it. You would go ahead and add a flasher relay to the left side and the right side of the switch, and then you can control the left and the right side independently. The problem with doing it like this is that now, if one flasher is more worn out than the other flasher, one side of the car is gonna blink faster than the other side of the car. Whereas if you put the flasher before the switch, both the left and the right side are fed from the same flasher, so the left and the right are going to flash at the same speed, unless the loads are different. If the circuits are completely separate and the lights flash at different intervals, you don't know if it's because the flashers are running differently or if it's because the loads are different versus only installing one flasher before everything, you'll, you'll be able to isolate whether or not the left or the right side is a problem based on how fast the light is blinking inside your dashboard. One last note, if you guys are wondering which one of these wires you would go ahead and run up to your dashboard, which would give you your left and right turn signal indicators. You can honestly choose either the front or the rear. There's no preferred or mandatory side that you would wanna run your indicator on. That's mainly a preference. So if your wiring is running through your dashboard or underneath your dashboard and then going to the front of the car, you're going to wanna run your indicator off that harness. If that harness was doing something weird and it went underneath the car or whatever and it was out of the way, you wouldn't want a random wire coming out of there and then into your dashboard. Probably wanna grab a wire out of your rear circuit and then pull it up into your indicator instead. But as for whether or not you can use the front or the rear, it doesn't necessarily matter. That choice is up to you. But now that we've drawn this all out, now let's go ahead and do it for real. First up, we've got a power wire feeding into a fuse, which we're going to bypass in this example, and we're gonna go straight into the flasher. So we're gonna pick one of the sides of the flasher relay, and we're gonna go ahead and take the power wire and just apply power right there. As of right now, the, there is no ground side, so the flasher's not doing anything. So let's go ahead and continue. From here, the flasher has to feed the opposite side into pin L. So let's go ahead 
and connect another wire here and then that's gonna go ahead and connect to pin L. I went ahead and I back probed the connector so we can move on to the next task and that is going through the switch which we have right here and then we're gonna go into pin L and then we're gonna follow that out to the left side and that's gonna go into pin H which is right here which is the light blue wire. From there it's going to feed into the light so let's go ahead and grab a jumper harness. We're gonna go from pin H all the way to the positive side of of the turn signal so we're all good there and now if everything is wired up like it's supposed to when I take this lever and turn it to the turn signal this light should turn on so let's go ahead and see if that works And there we go. So now let's go ahead and turn the turn signal back to center. Turns off, so we're all good there. Now let's click this over to the right side and see if it still turns on. All right, we've turned the turn signal lever off to the right side and the turn signal is not turning on, which is good because when you turn the turn signal to the right, the left side shouldn't turn on at all. So let's go ahead and move this back over to the left, center, left, turns back on. Now instead of connecting to pin H, which is the left front turn signal, we're gonna go ahead and connect to pin M, which is the left rear turn signal. So let's go ahead and find pin M, move this over, and that's gonna be the yellow pin, pin M. So let's go ahead and try it. And it still seems to work. So if you went ahead and took this yellow wire and ran it all the way to the back, you would have your rear turn signals. If you take the blue one and run it to the front, now you have your front turn signal. So everything's all good to go right there. Now let's go ahead and simulate the front and the rear turn signals by going ahead and adding a second light bulb. All right, so I'm finishing up the last bit of wiring right here. We've already set up the left side. Now we're gonna go ahead and set up the opposite, which is going to be the right side. I went ahead and moved the left side turn signal to pin M, which is the left rear, and then we're going to go right front, which is pin J, and I'm going to go ahead and back probe that one. So let's go ahead and just stick this guy back here, and hopefully I have enough contact between all the points, and everything should work as needed. So when I turn the switch to one side, one of the lights should turn on, and the other one should not, and then when I flip the switch to the other side, the opposite light should turn on, and the other one should not. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it to what would be the right side and now I'm going to turn it over to what would be the left side and it looks like we've got that taken care of if you really wanted to you could wire all of the left side through one of the wires and then all of the right side through another one of the wires but if you wanted to separate the circuits you could definitely do front and rear without a problem and the next episode we're going to jump into another circuit on the steering column so watch out for that i will see you guys all in the next one night wrencher signing out